Hello and welcome. Uh, today's video is about how to prepare for the AMRC Psych Paper A exam. So I'm Dr. Mia Ahmad Zubair. Uh, uh, so let's start with the introduction. So MRC Psych Paper A is a written exam uh, uh, which is uh, about the scientific and theoretical basis of psychiatry. So how many questions are there? There will be 150 questions each question carrying one mark and uh, the exam will be for three hours so uh, and the contents are divided approximately into two uh, pairs uh, two-thirds will be multiple choice questions and one-third will be extended matching items so here is a sample MCQ what you can see here is that there is a question stem and there are five options and you have to select one option and there is no negative marking so this is very standard format you have faced it in undergrad you have faced in it postgrad what is slightly different is this uh, 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 emi extended matching items which will be one third of the exam so here what happens is you'll first see some instructions here you can see the instruction that for each clinical vignette select one most appropriate differential diagnosis from the options and each option might be used once more than once or not at all so next comes the question first look at the question stem you are asked to see a 21 year old who arrives whatever blah blah it doesn't matter so then uh, choose one option that is the uh, thing that I'm trying to explain so there are uh, look at the options there are A to J uh, a, a total of 10 options the first option is an uncastic personality the last option is a schizoid personality now the answer to this question might be uh, I'm not saying what is uh, the actual answer I'm saying the answer might be dependent personality disorder so here comes the next question next question is also linked with the first question how because the question stem is different but the options are still similar and if you feel that the dependent personality disorder is the answer you can pick the same answer here as well so this is the EMI I would say it is not that much different from the MCQs however of course it needs practice so how uh, this is uh, the mark distribution of the MRC psych exam there are a total of five topics number one is behavioral science and sociocultural psychiatry which has 25 questions human development has 25 questions and then the next important uh, uh, stuff are basic neurosciences and clinical psychopharmacology both have 37 or 38 questions each and the last part is classification and assessment in psychiatry which has 25 questions so how much time do we need to prepare for this exam uh, so if you have some background in psychiatry I would say three months is enough uh, at least I didn't need more than that because I was all I already had some uh, clinical experience in psychiatry and I would suggest studying like uh, two to three hours a day in a calm and quiet environment however to kick start the process what you can do is you can start at the weekends and then uh, uh, or you can also start three days a week at first then you can increase your intensity of the preparation and if you have absolutely no experience in psychiatry then you might need a little bit longer like maybe four or five months so what are the resources for the MRC psych exam MRC psych paper A specifically there are some revision notes some textbooks and also some practice questions as I mentioned of SPMM so let's say I have some experience in psychiatry so uh, what are the resources that I will need um, so there are some must needed resources number one is SPMM notes and number two is SPMM questions so just reading the notes is not enough you have to practice enough questions to get an understanding of how the exam works and uh, just uh, however just reading this SPMM notes and questions means your preparation remains incomplete everybody is gonna read this SPMM notes and questions and the Royal College examiners knows this of course so they are actively trying to move trainees away from the SPMM so there are new questions coming up these days 
So there is one very important resource that uh, will help you tackle these new type of questions that is the Morsi Prescribing Guidelines in Psychiatry, uh, uh, the most recent edition. Currently it is 14th edition running. And there are also some optional resources, for example, Psych Mentor Question Bank and Explanations. Some people have found it very helpful, although I haven't read it that much. And let's say I am completely new to psychiatry. How can I start and still have a good preparation to score very high marks? So uh, the resources we uh, needed to start from the basics are number one is Oxford Handbook of Psychiatry. Currently the fourth edition is running. So you don't need to read this book from cover to cover. What you need to do is uh, you need to read the core signs and symptoms and under, try to understand these concepts and also s the classification systems like DSM-5, ICD-10 and ICD-11 and also read the treatment in general and also of course read the neurobiological mechanisms which might come up in the exam. And the second resource I would recommend is uh, an, an atlas actually. It is an atlas of neuroanatomy, uh, an atlas of structures, sections and systems by Duan uh, E. Haynes. So you can just look at the pictures uh, and identify the different structures. Uh, but you don't uh, need to go through that too much. Just if you feel that you need to identify a structure that you are uh, n not understanding, then you can go through that particular uh, structure. That's it. And uh, the third resource is Stahl's Essential Psychopharmacology. So this book is a huge one and it is impossible to read from cover to cover. So what maybe what we can do is this book has beautiful pictures. So what you can do is uh, you can read the, uh, 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 you can look at the pictures and read the captions. That will help you a lot to know about uh, different receptors and also the mechanism of actions of different medications. So this is actually a beautiful book. And uh, 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 next one is of course the mostly prescribing guidelines in psychiatry which I've already mentioned. So if possible, if you have time, please try to read this book from cover to cover because there are some history that like some questions uh, come up directly from this uh, book. Like I don't mean that uh, from like uh, copying the lines, but like if you have this book read, then you will find the answer uh, questions very easy to answer. However, if you don't have that much time, at least try to read important topics according to the MRC Psych Paper A syllabus. And lastly, revision and practice. What will you do? Uh, what, will you, what resources will you use for that? SPMM notes and questions. These are must for revision purposes. And you can also have a look at psych mentor questions and explanations if you have time, of course. Now, next topic comes preparation according to this uh, MRC psych paper A syllabus topics. First of all, have a good look at the syllabus that is provided at the MRC psych website. I will provide a link uh, below uh, my video so that you can enter that link. So the first topic was behavioral science and sociocultural psychiatry. Here, the SPMM notes and questions are enough. However, you, uh, you might have some difficulty in understanding some of the concepts because it is written in a, a very, like uh, I should say, compact way. So if you find any difficulty, please ask your colleagues or just Google it. And Sometimes what happens is that questions in the exam might uh, feel like coming out of nowhere because as I said, uh, the examiners are trying some new questions and the questions are sometimes being based on research papers. Um, what I would advise is don't panic. The exam is the same for everyone. The question you are answering, the other candidates will also answer the same question. So you everybody will not fail for sure so if you if you know the common que uh, answers to the common questions then there is a high probability that you will get a pass 
Next topic is human development. Again, SPMM notes are enough and also uh, read the questions as well. Uh, however, still remembering this might also be difficult, so Google it if needed. Next comes the basic neurosciences. Here, the SPMM notes are of course must read, as I said, because everybody will read it. However, there are some very new topics that was included recently. By recent, I mean in 2018 or 19. So um, these basic neuroscience techniques are actually hard to find in different textbooks or also notes. Uh, SPMM, no, uh, uh, SPMM uh, has a few questions on that. However, it is not comprehensive. I will try to illustrate this uh, in uh, 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 one of the videos I will make uh, next. I had made some notes before my exam regarding this topic. So here in neurosciences as well, questions in the exam might feel like uh, bolts from the blue and don't panic, I, uh, I'm advise, I advise again. And um, of course, this, these will be research paper based questions because these are uh, new topics. Uh, so, uh, and the next topic is the clinical psychopharmacology. Uh, and SPMM notes and questions are of course must and then you also should read, I would highly recommend mostly prescribing guidelines in psychiatry and if you have time you can also read Stahl's Essential Psychopharmacology. Next topic, the last one is classification and assessment in psychiatry. Uh, here um, it contains classification, descriptive psychopathology, dynamic psychopathology, etc. So SPMM notes and questions are very good in these topics. However, you still need to have a look at ICD-11. From what I know is they will uh, start assessing the ICD-11 from December uh, 2022. Uh, and uh, you can make a chart in your notes about differences uh, between uh, among DSM-5, ICD-10 and ICD-11 criteria for different disorders. And a few questions might come up from a book named Sim Symptoms in the Mind. These questions might be a little bit difficult, but you don't need to cor correctly answer all the questions to pass the exam. Lastly, one of the most important thing is how to use the SPMM resources. Do not read all the notes at a stretch. It will be meaningless. What you will have is you will uh, read one topic, you'll read the next topic and you'll forget the first topic. So the way to read it is read a chapter on the notes and then practice the high yield questions of that chapter just afterwards and continue until you finish all the notes and high yield questions. And if you find any difficulty in understanding any of the topics, go to the one of the basic books that I have mentioned or Google as needed. So what to do one month before the exam? Ideally, you would have finished reading the SPMM notes and high yield questions uh, uh, by now. So then what is left? Uh, start doing SPMM mocks. There are, cu are currently a total of 12 mocks. You need to do uh, these mocks at least twice and score yourself, of course, and read the answer explanations to all the questions of the mocks and if you find uh, that you are confused about any of the questions or the explanations then go back to the basic topics from the SPMM notes or the other books that I have mentioned and in the end the last thing is practice the SPMM fresh questions so the SPMM questions are of three types number one is high yield questions number two is mocks and number three is fresh questions. These fresh questions sometimes contain some of the questions that actually came up in previous exams. So uh, and uh, it might happen that you will uh, get a low score when you do it initially but don't get discouraged. Everybody have the same problem so you will improve as you practice and follow the same strategy like the mocks for ans answer explanations. Go back to the basics whenever necessary. So how many times should I study the SPMM resources? This is another important question that candidates often ask. So ideally you need to study the SPMM notes at least twice to consolidate your memory and same goes for the SPMM mocks and also fresh questions. 
this is what I would suggest. Some people might need less, some might need more. It depends on your individual capability to remember and understand. And uh, when you are close to the exam, SPMM notes uh, are not that important. What is important then is the SPMM mocks and the fresh questions. Uh, you uh, repeat those things just before the exam. So start the preparation, rock the exam. And do you have any questions? Feel free to comment. Thank you so much.